his name is Henry Dodge. It's set in 1949. And Henry is a bigot, but he's got absolutely no idea that he's a bigot. He thinks that how he behaves is normal and acceptable uh, because a, a relative that he loves has told him there are some people you just don't mix with. So part of the story is how he has to confront his prejudices. In a sense, it's like, it's like layers being peeled off from his eyes, seeing the world in a different way, which is, I think, what happens when you do grow up as an adolescent. He's a cinema fanatic, and he goes every single week, at least three times a week, which was also quite normal at that time, because not a lot of many people had, not everyone had a wireless even, let alone a television set. And uh, so he has a little part-time job that he does at a grocer's to earn extra money to go to the cinema. And he makes friends with this woman who gets him into films, who later on lends him a camera with some leftover film in it and tells him to finish off the film. So another part of the story is when he later on develops this film in the school darkroom and comes across something very disturbing. And then, of course, the story starts to resemble the thrillers that he's seen on the big screen. Also, the other thing about Henry is that he's not a great talker. You know, he expresses himself through a visual way. He takes in, he very much takes in everything around him, not just the people, but the way light is reflected. So that's another reason why he likes going to the cinema. The, the cinema thing, that happened literally, I wasn't intending, I didn't know when that was going to be set. I had insomnia one night. Uh, you know, I couldn't sleep, my brain was going round. And um, three o'clock in the morning, I saw this cinema in my head, a very old cinema. <clears throat> and I thought, oh, is someone trying to save this cinema? Or am I going back in time? So I just let it suck me in, you know, just let to see what happened. And gradually I found myself being drawn back to 1949. When I lived in London, uh, I'd often, you know, grab, grab a sort of, aim for the National Film Theatre. I think the South Bank's one of my favourite places. But as a child, I, I loved going to the cinema, that sort of coming out and then acting everything you'd seen on it, you know. It's all, it's all light and shade, isn't it? And if you were happy all the time, you wouldn't notice, would you? You've got to be miserable occasionally. And then when you're happy, you think, oh, this is nice. <laughs> I hope they'll be sucked in to a, a completely different world I always like the idea that they've got, they're carrying their own private cinema in their pocket. That's what I want. I don't want them to analyze it. <laughs> I just want them to just totally be drawn in, you know, as if they're watching, uh, uh, watching a film in their head. Mm -hmm.